make sure you check out my new channel where there'll be a brand new football manager series starting soon and the link is in the description Hello and welcome back to Curve Stomp City and another episode of ECW Lives on TEW 2016. And today we start the official war on Zero One in Japan. And the plan is to eventually buy them. So we're basically going to poach all the talent that we can um, just to bring their ratings down, maybe help them lose their TV deal. Yeah, hopefully we can buy them, take their popularity. Basically just because the current plan to get good popularity in Japan is not working. And so we've signed Masato Tanaka, and he's 61st in the world. He is a mid-carder there, but we're signing him on a written deal, so he's going to have to leave 0-1. He's already signed it, and he's got one week left. We have also signed Takeshi Morishima. He is a main eventer there, and he's 26th in the world on the Power 500, and he's coming on a written deal as well. And we also have Tiger Mask. Four coming in, 151st in the world. He's a lower mid carder for zero one. And finally, we've got another main eventer, 17th in the world, Yoshinari Agawa. So, yeah, hopefully, this helps them go out of business and hopefully we can eventually buy them. And also, I've shortlisted anyone that's a regional star in Japan or above. So, basically, if they try and replace the people we're taking, we're going to jump in and we'll consider whether it's worth poaching them away on a written deal or developmental maybe and also speaking of japan we tried to get a deal on kensai telecasting before and we couldn't do it but i've noticed that we actually can now we'll try and get prime time if we can and uh, no they don't want to give us that so maybe late evening so yeah that's going to give us reputation in the shikoku region of japan we're also going to get a deal for events as well so we can put our pay-per-views on free tv they don't want that but that's fine. Looking at the growth of our popularity in Japan, it's not looking good. And if you've got any other ideas, do drop them in the comments below. And this is a bit of a bigger intro than usual, but I've got a lot to show. I've discovered this section of the game where it's just a child company screen and gives me full control of our developmental. We can set uh, the schedule, we can look at the roster. Um, I've set it to developmental territory rather than child company, which means they won't be signing anyone themselves on a paper appearance. And I've sacked all the paper appearances that they did sign. Yeah, so here's the roster at the minute. We brought in four people from XPW into developmental. But yeah, we signed Alter Boy Luke. Chaos at the suggestion of Pandilla Time Free, I think his name is. He basically left a comment suggesting him and assigned him. So yeah, if you do want me to look at anyone, drop it in the comments below. And if they're good enough, I will sign them. Also, we've got Pogo the Clown. And Super Dragon. And outside of XPW, we signed Rios. And you probably know him as S.A. Rios from WWF back in the day. And for some reason, he always sticks out in my mind when I think about wrestling when I was younger. And for some reason, I like this guy. I think it was just... I think I've seen him on like stuff like Heat. And for some reason, he stands out in my mind. So I signed him as well. And he's got a main event push on the developmental program. And our developmental have held two shows so far. And we're, we're going to run two shows a week for this lead, for this first month to see how it goes. And hopefully they can boost their popularity enough to maybe cut back the schedule. Maybe have one every two weeks. But we had Bobby Roode defeat Brian Kendrick for the ECWA championship title. So Bobby Roode's our first ever champion in developmental. Delirious defeated Austin Aries. Pogo and Chaos defeated Garuda and Tanahashi for the international tag titles and Danny Havoc defeated Doug Williams for the ECWA top contender title and I've renamed the tag titles just to tag team titles but I left the other names as they are all that aside we're going to get into the first of two ECW revolts of the episode and we're also going to give Rhino a full pay rise as well all right, to start the show, we go to a studio live overlooking New York. And Paul Heyman and Minuri Tanaka walk into the shot. And Heyman says, ladies and gentlemen, tonight myself and Minuri Tanaka are taking the night off because, well, we deserve it. And then Min Minuri has been working so hard over the last year. And as you know, he will be main eventing the biggest show of the year, Global Glory. 
So we have to rest him. I'm sure you understand. And they got a 76 B minus to open the show. So good stuff from Heyman. And then in an extremely short match, Fergal Devitt defeats Kendo Kashin in 4 minutes 55. Just to give Fergal a win. And he got a 45 Kashin with a 69, 62 C overall. So good match. And then a section of John Cena's music video for his new song, New Gangsters, from the album Chain Gang for Life is Shown. And then text appears at the end saying the champs return next week. And it's got a 49D+. Plus. And then in a decent match, AJ Styles defeats Tajiri in 10 minutes 04 by pinfall with the Styles clash. So both Phenomenals have got a pin victory tonight. So a bit of momentum for both of them after the mutual split. And 68C+. Plus. Apparently Tajiri's gimmick's getting stale, so I'll have to look into that. 72 from Style, so nearly main event level. In fact, I think it is main event level. And 58 from Tajiri. And then CM Punk enters the arena for his television title open challenge. And before you can speak, Tommy Dreamer music hits. And it's got a 69C+. Plus. And then we obviously go into that match. And CM Punk defeats Tommy Dreamer by submission in 9 minutes 46 with an Anaconda Vice. And CM Punk makes defence number 5. So he's really putting the title out there. And he's holding on to it as well. So, yeah, he's making himself look very good with this run. And CM Punk had an in-ring performance of 72. Dreamer got a 77. So good from him as well. But 80B for not even the main event. So that's really good. From both men. Maybe we should start using Dreamer more. But then we go. Quickly backstage. And it's Rhino and Samoa Joe. In a backstage fight. And security guards try to intervene. But they all get wiped out by both men. And the two fight. Until Joe manages to manoeuvre. Into a Kikina clutch. Making Rhino pass out in the process. And then Joe locks in the hold. So hard. That his own eyes begin to roll back. So yeah, just like he has been doing on Raw, when he's got the hold locked in, he's looking like The Undertaker um, with his eyes going backwards. So yeah, I think it looks pretty cool, so I may as well get that involved. And that and the heat between the two continues. And this got an 88B+, plus, so absolutely solid again. And then in the main event, literally just to get Sting involved in the main event again, because... He brings in great ratings and boosts the show really well. But in about that had apparently fantastic heat and great wrestling, Sting defeats Keiji Muto in 11 minutes 35 by submission with a Scorpion death lock. And this was just to see how Sting does against a main event caliber wrestler. And he's doing about the same, to be honest. The same as what he did with lower mid-card Fergal Devitt and mid-card AJ Styles. So yeah, maybe it is just the fact that Sting's in the ring. It doesn't matter who he's against, he's going to get a round B. So that's really good to know. And I'm a bit torn with Sting now because I wasn't expecting him to do so well because his debut didn't go great for him. But he's really holding the show together. And I've had already had a plan for him for Global Glory and a plan for the main event scene. Um, which you can probably tell with the main event scene who it's going to involve, but... Sting's put a bit of a spanner in the works because I'm not sure what to do now. But yeah, I'll think about it and we'll see where it goes. But yeah, 80B from, from them too. And we've got an 80B overall, increase in our popularity in 20 regions. So solid show overall at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Alright, so we'll just go straight into the next show. And a video airs again from the New York studio. And Paul Heyman is stood in front of the camera. And behind him is Minoru Tanaka wearing his golden robe. And he's looking out of a huge window, looking at the New York skyline. And Heyman talks to the camera and says, We saw the show last week and tonight I want to give the fans what they want. And first on the card will be Samoa Joe versus Rhino. And I want you to 
to take each other out for good. Have fun. And we will also see two number one contendership matches. The former tag team champions have impressed me. So tonight AJ Styles takes on Fergal Devitt. The winner faces low key this Sunday for the ECW Junior Heavyweight Championship. And our main event will see Vampiro take on Sabu and Sting. The winner will be jobbed out to the main man Minuri Tanaka at Guilty as charged. So a bit of a shoot from Heyman at the end there. Uh, breaking kayfabe a little bit. But still sort of in character at the same time. And Heyman has a huge grin on his face as we end the segment. So yeah, two number one contendership matches and a grudge fight booked for tonight. And this got a 50C, 56C minus. And we go into that f- match that Heyman talked about. And Rhino drew with some Samoa Joe in 9 minutes 39 when the referee lost control and stopped the match. And apparently at times there was a definite lack of psychology on display. And the match had a tendency to drift a little. But still we got a good rating. 76B minus 85 from Rhino. 77 from Joe. So yeah, solid match to start. And Jay Briscoe is shown walking down the corridor. And he walks into the locker room to find John Cena laying in a pool of his own blood. And Jay rushes over and tries to wake Cena and calls for help and then he is hit around the head with a lead pipe and the camera pans up and it's New Jack and then New Jack walks away while shouting back and he says you ain't no real gangster you messing with the wrong game and New Jack is back after being fired last time or he might have walked out one of the two but yeah, um, New Jack debuted his wild man gimmick and got initial rating of above average, so not bad. And we're going to see where this goes. Um, I wanted to do this storyline for a while. Couldn't bring in New Jack. And we're just going to see how it goes. Um, if he performs or messes about again, he's gone. But we're giving him a second chance, so let's see. And I think it's pretty cool to give Cena and New Jack in a feud together. And then CM Punk is in the ring ready for his open challenge. And he says, time and time again, I have proved I'm the very best in this ring. I see the straight edge movement growing in ECW. Each week, I see more and more X's in the air. So if you are with me, I want you to put your hand on your heart and repeat after me. I have been saved. And then a small portion of the audience go along with Punk while the rest still boo. And then Chris Saban's music hits. And he says, I hear you have an open challenge going on tonight. Count me in. And then Saban runs to the ring and goes straight after Punk. And the bell rings. And the performance was from CM Punk was good. The angle got the crowd hot air. Um, announcing and colour commentary did well. And I forgot to mention that I brought in Don West in the end on commentary. Um, he seemed like a popular choice in the comments. A bit of a fresh face for everyone in 2002. So yeah, we've gone with that. And he seems to be doing well with Joey Styles. And Chris Saban was very underwhelming, apparently. 48D plus from that promo. He was given a bit of mic time. I set his rate. I set him to be rated on microphone. So maybe that's the problem. Um, just to test him out. And then CM Punk defeats Chris Saban in 9 minutes 40 by submission with the Anaconda Vice. And CM Punk makes... Defence number 6. And apparently they have great chemistry. 58 from Punk. 51 from Saban. C minus 80. C minus 58 overall. Uh, AJ Styles defeats Fergal Devitt in 9 minutes 54 by pinfall with a Styles Clash. And this got a great rating. 73 B minus. So two people that came in as fresh faces and unknowns have put on a great match there. Um, 72 from AJ, 62 from Devitt, 73 B- minus overall. So yeah, AJ is the new number one contender. And then in a superb match, Vampiro defeats Sting and Sabu in 9 minutes 38 when Vampiro defeats Sabu by pinfall with a choke slam. So Sting is still unpinned, but Vampiro goes to guilty as charged as the number one contender to take on Tanaka. And... 
Sabu debuted his Saiku gimmick. The last time he appeared, he was on a one-night deal. Now he's signed a f- official contract, and he got a great for that. And 72 from Vampiro, 80 from Sting and Sabu, so good from them. And good from Vampiro as well, to be fair. But 75 B-. minus. And then Angel raises Vampiro's hand as he stares into the camera, showing no emotion. And lights go out and they disappear. And 70 C+. Plus to end the show, B-72, minus increasing our popularity in 20 regions for that one. And before we go, we're just going to look at the Guilty as Charged card. And we've got the ECW World Junior Heavyweight Championship with Loki defending versus AJ Styles. And then the ECW World Television Championship will be on the line in an open challenge once again. And then Sting is going to take on Sabu. So the two losers of the main event will go one-on-one. So that should be a good match. They've both got 80 so, yeah, we should that should boost the pay-per-view rating. Then Rhino is going to take on Samoa Joe once again after the last match went to a draw. And then the ECW World Heavyweight Championship will be on the line when Minoru Tanaka defends against Vampiro. So that will be in the next episode. Um, so hopefully you're looking forward to that. And if you are, hit the like button and subscribe for more TEW 2016 and general wrestling content. And until next time, peace.